So hi, hello everyone again and welcome uh, to another Saturday microscopy live stream. Uh, I'm seeing that the chat is already very active. <laughs> Many people are already have already uh, joined uh, the live stream. Yeah. Hello and welcome again, everyone. Um, I think uh, that uh, as every week we're going to do a little sound check. I hope that you're able to hear me properly, that it's not too loud uh, and also that uh, it's not uh, too soft. Okay, um, and uh, what I would like to do today is, is I would like uh, to talk about phase uh, contrast uh, uh, microscopy. Yeah, sound seems to be good and uh, yeah, uh, great. Uh, that uh, so many people are already joining in. Um, yeah, so um, you already know, probably if you are, have already uh, participated in the live stream before, you already know that it's already become a tradition for the first couple of minutes uh, to quickly say from where you are around the world. And I'm going to read um, also the chat um, a little bit. Uh, the purpose is, is that it usually takes a few minutes uh, for more and more people to join in in the live stream uh, because YouTube will give a notification to the people to remind them. And this takes a few minutes. And for this reason, I um, will always uh, yeah, read out uh, uh, all of the greetings first. Well, hello from Lebanon, from Lake Constance and Bodensee. Okay, Aloha from Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay, and yeah, from uh, Firenze, from Italy. Yeah, some people are really uh, 325 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> That's really, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I feel honored. Okay, um, uh, hello from the Netherlands. Okay, and uh, Argao, uh, it's another one. Okay, yeah, hello from Norway. Sound is good. West Coast, United States. Okay. And uh, yeah, Glasgow, Scotland, yeah. yeah, and from South Africa, and New Hampshire, USA, from Germany, uh, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, uh, Lexington, KY, I think that's Kentucky in the United States, from the Netherlands, from California, Mexico, Berlin, London. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I would like to do today is, is I would like to talk a little bit about phase contrast microscopy. Um, yeah, I would like to do the following. I would like to talk a little bit, uh, first of all, a little bit of a theory. Oh, you see that I've got some stuff here. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about my personal experiences with phase contrast microscopy. Um, and I would also like to then, yeah, of course, uh, put uh, several specimens under the microscope. So um, for those of you who do not know what phase contrast microscopy is, is I'm going to quickly give a very short uh, demonstration here. So for this reason, I'm switching over to uh, the microscope view. What you see already, of course, here, look, here is my arrow here. Of course, in the corner, you see um, the objective that I'm currently using. I'm using a 40 times uh, phase contrast objective. And look, this is the specimen in the background that you see. This is not phase contrast yet. This is not phase contrast. This is a regular bright field. And what you see here in the background, that's an amoeba. It is not moving because it is a permanent slide. Okay, it's a commercial permanent slide. It's been stained. Um, yeah, and you see that the contrast is not very, very good. You don't see a lot of details, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now show you how it looks like in phase contrast. All I have to do is I have to rotate the yeah, next setting and this is how it looks like in phase contrast and you see that there are now many more details visible also some cell organelles can be seen inside here which uh, were not visible before so basically so, uh, phase contrast microscopy back again okay um, is able to increase the contrast in an optical way so without staining yes the specimen is stained here but that's not the point Okay, even if it were not stained, we're able to see a much uh, better contrast. So for transparent specimens, phase contrast is extremely useful. Now, what I would like to do now is I would like to explain to you in this live stream um, how this actually works. And uh, yeah, I do not want to get too technical. And then, of course, I'm going to show you some examples. And I'm also going to show you some examples where phase contrast probably is not uh, the best uh, solution. And uh, um, as always, uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, yeah, you, you can type them in into the chat um, and I will try and attempt to answer them. Okay, so yeah, so this means uh, I will interrupt myself every now and then I will read the chat and see to see if there's something uh, again there. And uh, yeah, 
uh, I will then try to answer it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, from Indiana and also from Saudi Arabia, I've got someone. Yeah. So welcome everyone around the world. So we go back uh, over to the desk view and I would like to now, yeah, I included here a picture. This is, yeah. He, his name was Fritz Zernike. He is, uh, he was from the Netherlands. Okay. And he won the Nobel Prize for physics, I think in the 1950s sometime, 1953, I think, for having invented the phase contrast microscope. So this guy is the father of phase contrast uh, microscopy and uh, it has revolutionized light microscopy because uh, yeah, it may, now, now you can see certain structures that were not visible before. Okay, and I will demonstrate this a little bit. So this is a really yeah, important, uh, um, important gentleman here uh, for phase contrast microscopy. And um, I'm going to do now um, um, do the following. I'm going to now show you a little bit of what are the parts that you need. Okay, so um, all of these here that you see here, these are all yeah, I've got uh, parts I got bought them second hand for my my other Olympus microscope and there are really uh, two important uh, components that you need is you need some kind of a phase contrast um, condenser okay um, or at least uh, um, this is also one in a turret this basically means that you can rotate this okay but uh, there are also uh, cheaper systems that allow you to um, add the filter phase contrast filters um, separately okay and uh, then you need phase contrast uh, objectives okay and you know that it's a phase contrast objective it says your pl pl stands for a positive low and sometimes it says ph and pH uh, stands for positive high. So it's, yeah, these are basically two, two, uh, two versions. And uh, yeah, I've got here um, also another phase contrast uh, objective, a uh, slightly older one over here. You see, it says here PL for positive low 10 times, okay? So, and um, the important question that uh, is already mentioned, uh, is already mentioned here in the chat, and it's a very important one, is, is, is it possible to upgrade a normal microscope to phase contrast? And the answer is, is um, maybe. It depends on the microscope. Okay, so if you have, um, the reason is, is, is because if for your brand of microscope, if there are no phase contrast objectives or a specific, I mean, usually they can be, um, yeah, if you use the 160 millimeter standard, then you can just buy you know, pretty much a phase contrast objective. But what you need is, is you need a phase contrast, a phase contrast condenser, which fits to the objective. And if there is no phase contrast condenser for your microscope, then you cannot upgrade. Okay. Um, generally, what I suggest is the following is, um, I know that some people, I was actually one like this myself, is, okay, I want to upgrade my microscope and what's the next possible thing? Let's go for phase contrast. And it, it's not cheap. Okay. Um, and my suggestion probably would be is, is um, yeah, in, in, yeah, you can either try to upgrade by getting maybe used parts. For example, this one was for, for an Olympus microscope. Um, then they're available, but that's also not cheap. I mean, this you cost uh, 300 euros, just, yeah, this, uh, yeah, the, the condenser. For that price, you can already get a, a microscope, right? Um, so it, it's not cheap, but maybe that this live stream is also going to show you a little bit that maybe you don't actually need it, okay? Yeah, so I'm just going to show you a little bit what to expect. Yeah, um, so this is uh, the thing is, is uh, if you really want to upgrade it, you probably, um, it might probably be easier to buy a new microscope, which is already configured for phase contrast. I know this is, is also not cheap. I, I, I get it. Okay. Could you make a video or explain the benefits of a dark field condenser? Aren't there differences between filter and condenser ah yes that's also something that i could talk about uh, maybe not today um, a dark field condenser a specific dark field condenser um, essentially um, yeah um, allows uh, has um, has concave mirrors built inside which redirects the light and therefore you have a higher higher light intensity and uh, to my knowledge you can also go up uh, with the magnification yet further okay but um, this i think is a pretty um, large topic already Okay. Why does phase contrast need its own objective? I will show this to you. Okay. So um, this is uh, 
uh, something that I would like to demonstrate. So what I have over here is, is uh, the phase contrast uh, um, condenser, which goes beneath the, uh, the microscope stage. And when you turn it around, um, and you're going to see that uh, um, there are so-called phase contrast annuli. You see that uh, it's uh, like a, a, this is made of glass. And then there you see that um, over here, that there are basically rings, bright rings that you see here, um, where light is um, allowed to go through. Okay, and the different settings here are for the different magnification. So over here, um, when you basically turn it, so now in the, the ten, it's for the 10 times objective. Okay, and then when you turn it, that's for a 20 times objective. And then you turn it for 40 times objective, of course, for 100 times objective. And the zero is conventional bright field, no phase contrast. Okay. And when you've got the zero in here, just a normal one, then you see that over here you have uh, the the regular the regular condenser in place. Okay, so this is just the normal condenser that many microscopes already have. Okay, um, that's not phase contrast. And otherwise, if you I don't know if you use I know the ten times like here, then this uh, ten times uh, filter over here will be yeah will be in place and uh, yeah. That's basically how it, how it looks like. Okay, so basically it only allows a ring of light uh, to go through. Okay, and now this the size of this ring now must correspond uh, to the objective. And I'm going to now show you a phase contrast objective, a matching one. And what you do is is you turn it around and you look at it from the back. Okay, and now what you're able to see very clearly is is you're able to see the phase contrast ring. Okay, there is a ring on the lens. It's semi-transparent. Okay, yeah, and this ring that you see in there is uh, has to match the size of the ring um, over here in, in the condenser. And this basically means that you have to make sure that the objective and the condenser that the, they must match. I'm going to show you now over here. This is a, an old ten times Olympus. Um, a very old Olympus objective and this is a slightly more modern Olympus objective yeah. it's a the finite uh, standard so it's also not made anymore yeah. so and if you turn it around you're also going to see this phase contrast ring here right but look at those two they have the same they have the same uh, uh, yeah magnification but the ring is different yeah. look at the size of the ring they're different and uh, when I bought <laughs> when I bought this this one over here and um, I had this objective and I said cool now I can do phase contrast no it, I couldn't because the size of the rings did not match and I'm going to show you later why this is important yeah so um, lesson the lesson that I learned is is, is do not yeah, uh, mix uh, different um, condensers and different objectives they have to match and even uh, from the same company because many years ago they changed the system around and even from the same company there were two different standards yeah. so what I had to do is, is in order to so basically those two they go together okay this works and uh, for this one I didn't have an appropriate condenser so I went again online and I found uh, another phase contrast condenser and this one now yeah uh, finally works yeah it's kind of, <laughs> I had to laugh a little bit when I got that um, because it's the more modern one it's already made uh, completely out of plastic <laughs> and the old one <laughs> is is solid heavy and, and made of, of, of metal yeah. and this one over here is, is you see that uh, here um, you can now see that uh, there is no glass here but uh, essentially there are some metal plates uh, and but still you can see that the central part is, is blocked out but the basically the, the the system the concept is exactly the same i need to find the plate ah here it is you cannot read it but it's 10 times oh here it's not yeah and then you, when you rotate this okay then you have got that's a regular bright field okay you see that the regular bright field is here yeah and here you can open and close the diaphragm by turning yeah so the concept is, is pretty much the same here, okay? Uh, D for dark field, that's also quite nice. So there's a dark field uh, patch stop here. And uh, this one is uh, for the 10, for the 40 times and for the 10 times, okay? So there are basically this condenser allows for 40 times and 10 times phase contrast. Yeah? And uh, this one over here allows for 10 times, uh, 20 times, 40 times, 100 times phase contrast and, and bright field.
Okay, so that's uh, simply to show you a little bit, um, yeah, that uh, if I have, let's say, a 20 times um, objective, I cannot use it uh, with this one. So again, it has to match, but I was quite happy that I had phase contrast with uh, those two now. So yeah, so for my old microscope. So this is uh, kind of the, the uh, yeah, the thing that you have to take care of when upgrading. And therefore, in many cases, or in most cases, um, if there are upgrade kits, check that they work for your microscope, number one. And uh, number two, very often, um, it will either be with a yeah a rotating condenser like this or there will be um, filters that you can put um, separately and every time when you change the magnification you have to put on a different filter manually it's not quite as convenient but that's that's also possible okay what are the average cost of phase contrast i have seen some upgrade kits uh, for around 400 to 500 euros or dollars Okay, um, yeah, um, so it might be, however, it might be a good idea, maybe if you already consider to spend more money, maybe to save a little bit together and then maybe buy a complete phase contrast microscope. Yeah, You have alluded to a pH and PL. Can you elaborate more either the difference and how each type will affect the visualization of the sample? And very briefly, um, I've only got a, a positive low, but um, what I read is it, it will give you an inverted image depending on the phase shift of the um, of the of, of the um, um, of the light. So structures that appear dark, um, yeah, with the PL will appear bright in the pH. Yeah, it depends into which direction the phase shift uh, happens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is the following: is is I'm going to now show you a a a video. I hope um, of. I think it's video two here um, of um, of having to align it. No, before I do that, before I do that, I have to explain this first. You notice that there are two um, yeah two levers over here, and I can yeah uh, move this uh, back and forth, and the other one over here as well. And then there is a screw here to tighten it so that I cannot move it anymore. Okay, yeah, and uh, yeah. So basically, what it does, um, and you can barely see this. Um, but what it does is it's important for centering uh, the yeah the ring the phase contrast ring for centering it okay and uh, for this one over here um, yeah it's not quite as convenient you have to use a screwdriver to center it as well okay you see there are those uh, screws here yeah and uh, this was actually not so easy to uh, to center it uh, it was a little bit tedious. Yeah, but I just uh, want to show you that there are different ways of, of actually centering it and that's actually the easy way. And I would like to show you now what you're able to see um, through the microscope. Okay. And uh, so let's try this here first. Ah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So this is now um, when I, yeah, so basically I'm now moving the, the lever and you can see that the, there's this ring, this bright ring that's moving. And I'm going to now pause the video and I'm going to now explain a little bit of what you're able to see. So I'm pausing the video. No, let's go for, forward a little bit. So it's a little bit off center. Okay. And I'm going to now use the arrow and I'm going to explain to you now, right now what you're able to see here. <coughs> Excuse me. This bright ring of light that you see, okay, that is the light that uh, came through the ring here. Okay, those, uh, those uh, clear rings, okay? That's the, this uh, light. And by moving this lever back and forth, I'm centering this bright ring of light and the darker, slightly darker ring that you see in the background, that is the uh, ring from the objective that I just showed you when you look through it. Okay. And what you have to do now is, is you have to make sure that both of them are aligned. So this means every time when you see, um, yeah, now it's aligned. Okay. And now not anymore. And yeah, you, you get the idea. Okay. So. Yeah, so um, I will, when, when it's uh, kind of overlapping like this, let me put the arrow away again, okay? Yeah, uh, you, you can see that now this uh, bright, this bright ring of uh, the, yeah, from the condenser now overlaps with the darker ring that you see over here, it's like, yeah, um, from, um, from the objective. And when it's set up like this, then, then you're ready to go, okay? Um, and uh, that's basically something that you have to do almost every time before you, uh, at least when it goes out of alignment. And um, in order to um, in order to properly align that, how do you actually see that? Well, uh, what you have to do is you have to get yourself a so-called a phase telescope. 
This is called a phase telescope. It looks like a pretty large eyepiece. And indeed, you put it in instead of the eyepieces and then you look through it and then you see it magnified. You see those two rings uh, magnified and therefore um, and therefore, it's uh, you, you can align it much better. And then when everything is aligned, then you basically uh, put in the eyepieces again and then you're ready to go. Okay, now that is the way it should be now. But what I what did I get when I had a mismatch between the uh, when this is uh, the example where I had a mismatch, okay, and uh, where the ring and the and the annulus did not match. I just want to show this to you again here as well. Again, pause this and the arrow. Uh, what you see is is over here, of course, uh, this bright ring of light uh, from the condenser. But the ring, the dark ring that you see here from the objective uh, was much smaller. So there was a lot of light uh, spilling outside. Here you see it a little bit in, in, on the edge here. There is a little bit of light spilling outside of the ring. And therefore, I could not get a proper phase contrast effect. And when I saw this, that I was not able to align it properly. I said, "What's going on? I, I can't believe this. Why? Why? Why do the does the condenser and the microscope uh, objective? Why don't they match?" And then I found out that uh, even though it's from the same company, there are different standards. And the, um, yeah, because uh, this uh, yeah, the, the objective is from I don't know maybe the 1970s, right? Uh, so this goes uh, or 60s even I don't know. Yeah, so it is pretty old, right? And then they of course they changed the standard sometime several decades ago, I guess, and and uh, uh, they. Therefore, because I was uh, doing second-hand shopping, I of course uh, um, yeah, it didn't match. Okay, I didn't know that. So, but that's why I learned a lot in the whole process. Yeah? But uh, kind of uh, centering this is, is pretty important. Okay. So um, and um, so uh, and uh, that's uh, the thing. So uh, again, a couple of questions. What is the theory of phase contrast? Um, it basically works as like this. The purpose of phase contrast microscopy is is that objects that are transparent um, can be seen with a higher contrast. So in other words, um, objects that are transparent, um, you're, you, you're seeing through it because they're clear. However, they still influence the light in, in the case that they make a so-called a phase shift of the light. So the light basically, um, the light wave is, um, yeah, we can imagine as a wave is shifted. Okay, uh, to a certain extent, because when light goes through a material of a different refractive index of, let's say, higher optical density, then the wavelengths become shorter. And this can, um, and when it goes out of the object again, then it continues normally, but then the wave is shifted. And what you do is, is you're now trying to interfere, basically overlap the light that went through the specimen, which is phase shifted and it uh, interferes with the light that did not go through the specimen. And what happens then is, is that those light waves, they cancel each other out and then it becomes darker. Uh, this is, sounds complicated. In other words, what phase contrast microscopy does is it converts transparent objects into differences of brightness. It makes certain structures darker and certain star st uh, structures brighter. And I would like to show this to you now using a video using bacteria. So, um, and I'm going to show you later on also, um, we're, I'm gonna put some live bacteria then um, also under the microscope, but this here is a video. I just uh, chose a video because they kind of look nice. <laughs> These are spiral shaped bacteria and the bacteria, they appear dark, okay? And I've really zoomed in now and I'm going to now show you a little bit. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm going to use again the arrow to illustrate this a little bit, you see that the bacteria like this one over here looks darker on a bright background. But in reality, the bacteria is not darker, it's transparent. Yeah? And then you see very bright areas as well. And I think these are the places where the bacteria touch the microscope cover glass or slide. Yeah. So um, in other words, uh, what happens is, is that uh, transparent objects like bacteria are now converted into brightness differences. Um, why is this so important in biology? Well, the reason is the following. If I were to use chemical stains to stain objects, living objects, then those chemicals often kill the objects. And this is a problem because uh, the chemicals, they change the thing around that I actually want to observe. And uh, for this reason, if I were to stain those bacteria, I could try to do that, but it's probably going to kill the bacteria. Right. Um, and uh, for this reason, um, there, I need somehow a, a way to make them better visible, even though, um, yeah, they're transparent. Yeah. 
So this is kind of the, the, the idea. Does it make sense to combine phase contrast and polarized light? I see no reason. Why not? I've not tried it yet so much. Okay. Can you show us how to put phase contrast condenser on the microscope? Um, I don't have a, a, a sample microscope with here, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, with me right now. But essentially, I mean, all you have to do is is you uh, um, have to lower. Uh, you basically put here it is. Here we go. Um, all you do is is uh, uh, it goes uh, under the microscope. So you have to make sure that your microscope actually has a condenser. So very basic introductory microscopes, uh, they don't have uh, condensers. Um, but then you simply take the regular condenser out and you put this one in and you tighten the screw. It's really easy, actually. Yeah. So the, it's actually, it, it's done in, in 20 seconds. Yeah? So there is really no, nothing complicated. Yeah? Um, and you, you all, yeah, there is a stage, you just put it on, you know, beneath the stage and, and tighten the screw and that, that's it. Yeah? How can we see those rings on the microscope? So the question, I, I guess you wanted to know um, how we're able to see those rings here under the microscope. Well, um, that works like this, that you basically um, take out the eyepiece uh, and you put in a phase telescope and then you look at this. So basically what I've done is I use the mobile phone to, uh, yeah, over here and that's basically what I saw. Yeah? So this is a magnifying glass, otherwise it's going to be too difficult to see. Yeah? So that is uh, really easy to do really. So you take out the eyepiece, you put in this here and then you look through it and then you're able to see those uh, two rings and then you're able to center this. Okay. So a, a lot of theory uh, um, up to this point. Okay, um, so what I would like to do now is I would like to simply show you now um, in a practical part a few things and I would like to show you how to, how they compare. Okay, um, bright field and also face contrast. And uh, I think one of the nice things and the easiest things is cheek cells. So let's prepare a few cheek cells and let's put it under face contrast. Um, yeah, and uh, let's do that. Um, so what do I need? I need a microscope slide, of course. Let's put the thing here, okay. Um, so this is a microscope slide. I need um, some, yeah, some, some cotton swabs. And uh, of course I've got some cover glasses here. And uh, I will, I'm now going to collect a couple of cheek cells. I'm going to put them on here and I'm going to show them to you how they look like in bright field in phase contrast. And if you want to, um, I can also stain them using methylene blue. Okay, the, yeah, for those of you who don't have face contrast micros, uh, microscope. So it works like this. You take, you can also take a toothpick, but I think this is easier. Okay. Okay. So somebody's asking, is this live? Hello. Yes, <laughs> this is a live stream. You can post comments if you want to, and I'm going to try to answer them. Can face contrast objectives also be used for? Yes. Okay. Peter is asking, thank you for the question because this is a very common question. Can phase contrast objectives also be used for bright field microscopy? Yes, very clearly yes. The image quality goes down a little bit because of the phase ring, but not notable, not, 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 some, not very noticeable. Okay. Okay, so let's collect some cheek cells. Mm -hmm. So plenty of cheek cells um, on here. And what you do is uh, you jump, just go like this. You, uh, I'm also rotating it a little bit. And usually I'm, I scratch it back and forth a little bit to break up some, some cell clusters. And when you hold it a little bit against the light, you're gonna see, ah, this is some, some, <laughs> some stuff on here. Okay, so plenty of cells. Um, and uh, I'm gonna put this into my trash can. My trash can is simply a little jar. Okay, and um, normally what you want to do is, is you always want to add a little bit of water. So I've got some, I've prepared some water. Tiny drop of water is enough. Okay, and uh, yeah, by the way, um, I recommend uh, water bottles like this because I don't have running water where I'm right now and you always need water. So here it is. And uh, of course, a cover glass uh, goes on top. I should have probably removed the paper here. And uh, yeah, and uh, I should have done this before, but I always um, use a microfiber cloth uh, to dry wipe it because there's always some grime and grease and stuff from the manufacturing process on here. Dry wiping is, is usually enough. Okay. 
Um, if you use uh, paper tissue, uh, tissue paper, then then sometimes there are tissue fibers on here, so that's why. And uh, okay, let's let's give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the microscope view, and uh, I'm going and now this is going to be bright field. So of course um, it's going to be a little bit difficult because I'm have. I have a very high magnification already put in. So you always start uh, with a low magnification, of course. Let's put it in. Now I have to kind of find the cells without um, actually, um, it's too bright. So here we go. Here we already see a few cells. Let's go up with the magnification. Okay, I've got DIC now. You want to see bright field, of course. So I have to focus. Yes, okay. So that's now, um, yeah, I want, let's compare 40 times, okay? So these are my cheek cells in bright field microscopy, okay? Uh, maybe I want to focus a little bit better, okay? Um, yeah, non-stained cheek cells, bright field microscopy. Let's move the arrow out of the way here a little bit, okay? Ah, yeah, sometimes you can actually, the, the circles that you see in here, that's the nucleus, okay? Um, yeah, and they're visible and that's basically how you normally would see it, right? And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over, same magnification, everything's going to be the same. Uh, I'm going to switch over to phase contrast. So I'm going to turn on my phase contrast micros and I see the same thing. That's surprising. Well, 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 because I did not rotate the condenser, um, the phase um, annulus in place. Um, this also answers a little bit the question is, is can you use um, a phase contrast objective for bright field. Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. This is a phase contrast objective here, okay? But I'm using bright field because I did not turn, I did not turn the condenser yet, okay? Here, here, that's the condenser. I have to look what I'm doing. I'm not turning it over. And I have to open the diaphragm, okay? And this is basically what I see. I have to refocus again a little bit, okay? And you can see that there is now um, yeah, significantly more structural detail visible. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move again over uh, other direction. Uh, that's uh, again bright field. Yeah, I close the condenser to increase the contrast. Yeah. That's regular bright field. And this is phase contrast. Okay. So, um, so this was a, a short demonstration and uh, I'm going back to some of the questions, okay? Um, can phase contrast objectives also be used for bright field microscopy? The answer is clearly yes, as I already mentioned. However, the image quality is slightly lower because of the phase ring. Uh, this means uh, that uh, there is a little bit of loss in contrast and, and clarity. However, um, you can actually almost forget about it. Yeah, it's you have to do a side by side comparison. Yeah? Um, I bought my first microscope yesterday, thanks to you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay. With a condenser for 270 euros. I work in a hospital lab and I'm allowed to borrow, uh, borrow materials from work. That's always nice. That's cool. Which uh, microscope? Well, I have, uh, I've got an Olympus microscope, but there are many brands out there that actually have uh, phase contrast. The easiest method to stain cheek cells is, is to use fountain pen ink. Fountain pen ink. I don't have fountain pen. I've got methylene blue here, but use a little bit of fountain pen ink. Um, and um, yeah, it stains quite nicely. Dilute it down a little bit. If you don't have methylene blue, you can use fountain pen ink. <laughs> yes, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> yes, somebody already answered this. Can you make the background even darker and the specimen brighter? The thing is the following. If you have phase contrast, um, then um, you, you do not have a condenser. Okay, so I cannot do that. Um, um, so there is no possibility for me to adjust this. I can close the Köhler diaphragm. Um, to reduce uh, to reduce reflections and to increase uh, reduce stray light, but I'm not able to um, control it otherwise. Okay. So if uh, what I usually do is, is I usually take a picture. I usually take a picture of, of these things and then I increase the contrast in an image editing program. And you can really get very nice images. So, for example, the image um, in the thumbnail of this video um, are actually cheek cells where I increase the contrast a little bit. So the thumbnail of, of this um, yeah, video here. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, how does face contrast image compare with a slide stained with methylene blue? I'm going to do that now. Okay. Um, 
I think I'm going to do that now because um, you want to know and I also prepared this a little bit. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to um, switch over again to Brightfield, of course, that's important. And now let's add a little bit of uh, methylene blue. And I think it's easier if I simply take out this slide and do that on the here on here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm going to take again a yeah, some cotton swab and I'm going up. Oh, you do not see it because there is no desk view. Okay, here it is. Okay, so uh, because yeah, I think there are not a lot of cells here. So hmm. let's quickly do it again. Okay, I'm saving slides, so I'm just going to use the same slide. Okay, and uh, then a drop of methylene blue. This is Loeffler's solution, so it's not. Uh, yeah, it's already uh, it's not pure methylene blue, but uh, it's already in the right concentration. You add a little bit of methylene blue. And methylene blue is a general purpose stain, and uh, if you don't know which one to buy, then just get methylene blue. Um, or my recommendation is use fountain pen ink and dilute it down a little bit. Yeah, the actually, fountain pen ink works uh, works surprisingly nice as well. Let's put it on here. Okay. Um, usually what I do, and maybe not necessary here, but usually um, if there is um, uh, some 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 of the liquid spilling out on the side, I always um, take some away because I don't want my, that my microscope stage becomes flooded. Okay, but that's going to be fine. So let's uh, try it again. Um, again, I'm going to start um, at a low magnification. Let me change over to a microscope review again. I have to open the Köhler diaphragm. Okay. So that's of course bright field, and of course it's a little bit too, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there are not a lot of cells if I already had, yeah, but oh, who, who cares, okay? So let's focus again here. Um, let's go up with the magnification 40 times. Uh, I lost it here, here we go. Okay, and that's uh, 40 times and what we can already see here is is we can see um, the nucleus um, of the cell. Yeah, methylene blue likes to stain DNA uh, specifically because um, in this case it's called Loeffler's solution. It's an alkaline, uh, so a high pH solution and alkaline stains like to stain uh, parts that are acidic and uh, the DNA is more acidic. Yeah? So you see that this is basically stained with a methylene blue. Yeah, and I recommend fountain pen ink as well. And uh, if you dilute it down a little bit, you're going to see that actually the cells will start to accumulate the ink. They will stain darker than the sur surrounding. Okay. So, but you want to see now again, now this is now methylene blue stained plus phase contrast. No, that's just bright field because it did not change over the condenser yet. And that is now methylene blue plus phase contrast. Okay. So, and there is one thing that I would like to show you here, um, yeah, um, as well. And that's something that uh, is very typical for phase contrast microscopy. You see that those structures um, have a, a little bit bright on the outside. By the way, yeah, uh, there's this very fine, bright area around the outside. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I showed you the bacteria here, I'm going to uh, also stop this. We're going to see that the bacteria, um, yeah, they are dark, but on the outside, they're a little bit uh, brighter. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward here. You also see it here better. Yeah, the, the bacteria are dark, but on the outside around it, they are brighter. That's a very typical phenomenon for phase contrast microscopy. Yeah, you can actually say it's an artifact. Yeah, but uh, yeah. The, there where the light is uh, passed through the bacteria. This is where uh, the light was extinct, uh, basically uh, canceled. Um, and uh, there where it's brighter, the, it, it got brighter. Okay. Um, so we go back to the scene. So that is basically the yeah, uh, phase contrast. And again, regular bright field, other direction, regular bright field looks like this. I have to close the condenser a little bit to increase the contrast okay so that you see the uh, yeah okay again a couple of uh, comments here 
It works amazing. I have my USB camera attached so I can post clips. Okay. Uh, the only downside of phase contrast is the halo. Yes, that's the halo that I was referring to. Okay. From some of the diffracted light from the specimen. Yep. Uh, Sweet, I'm looking at an adapter for my phone for that. Um, it was a bit of a surprise to find a pointer needle by the IP since Amazon didn't mention it, but you can easily remove it, that is correct. Um, if you have a, I know it's a little bit off topic, but it doesn't matter if you see, have a pointer needle and if you don't like that, you turn around the micro, uh, the eyepiece and you can try to remove it, okay? Um, if you have uh, access to a 3D printer, yes, okay. So, okay, so this is basically was the, the yeah, uh, cheek cells um, and uh, I just uh, um, a couple of other pictures that I would like to show you now, photographs that basically, yeah, almost 30 years old. I was still at university doing my, um, my research uh, and uh, I uh, used phase contrast microscopes at that time. And at that time, digital cameras did not exist yet. So these um, are film, I took pictures on film on black white film and then i developed it myself because at that time i still did some some development and i, I scanned those uh, films and just want to show you some of the bacteria that i made 30 years ago over here um yeah using um yeah phase contrast microscope um, and uh, look at this here i would like to explain this a little bit you can see that these are rod shaped bacteria and uh, they're darker but you see there is this interesting bright spot in some of them or in most of them this was actually my task uh, to find out uh, um, if uh, this uh, bright spot is a so-called an endospore or whether it's uh, PHB, which is a storage granule. And it turned out that this is actually an endospore. So basically certain bacteria, for example, Bacillus, and that's actually is a, belongs to Bacillus uh, bacterium. They form those uh, endospores, which uh, are able to survive uh, heat and, and dryness. Yeah, so this was actually an example here. Here again, you have, see quite nicely the halo around it. Okay, but I have to also tell you that I increased the contrast on the computer a little bit. Yeah, um, so that is a uh, one example of bacteria. Here are others. You have very strong halo effect here, especially where it's very dense. And uh, what we are do we're doing in the microbiology lab is, is what we were putting those bacteria under the microscope of, as a quality check. Because if you see bacteria that all have the same shape, uh, then you can assume that you are having a non-contaminated pure culture. If you have now bacteria of different shapes here, then you that's actually cause for concern because then you've got a contaminant. Yeah? Again here, rod shaped bacteria. Okay. You can see of different lengths because I guess they were dividing. Here, um, also, yeah, they also formed endospores. Those very bright. Uh, some of them did not. You can see over here, yeah. Some of them not yet, and some of them actually formed those bright endospores. Again, here everywhere this halo effect. These were basically film, uh, yeah, analog film um, at that time, back in the 1990s. This was here also very strong halo effect. Okay, and last example here as well. Okay, and you, you can see that they all have the same shape. Um, I would be kind of concerned now if all of a sudden I had a bacteria in here that have, I don't know, different shapes because this would be a sign that I messed up something and that I'd have a contaminant in the culture and then I'd have to restart the whole thing again. Yeah, because you cannot do an analysis of, of the bacteria if you have, if you do not have a pure culture. Okay, so yeah, um, I cannot wait for you to prepare live bacteria. Are you going to use yogurt bacteria? Uh-huh, uh-uh, not today. Um, I'm going to use something that I accidentally discovered. <laughs> um, but um, I'm going to show you uh, not yogurt bacteria. Well, but you know what I've got here? Um, if uh, Look, folks, uh, a lot of people want to look at bacteria, okay? Um, be because it's a nice way also of testing your microscope. And it's not a good idea to grow your own bacteria because you don't know what you're growing. So some people want to grow, want to see bacteria. So use yogurt bacteria or look what I've got here. Is this, uh, it's called probiotic. And this, uh, these are bacteria for an aquarium. A, a colleague of mine in, the, in work um, who's got an aquarium, he gave this to me. And it's in powdered form. And uh, yeah. You basically put this, put it into the uh, an aquarium so that uh, um, uh, yeah the aquarium is able to regenerate better. Um, so I assume that they are safe <laughs> because otherwise we would not be allowed to handle them. But if you are using unknown bacteria because you've spoiled food or something like this, you probably don't want to do that. 
But you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do today, okay? Um, because I accidentally, um, um, yeah, accidentally f discovered something today. So look what I've got here. I'm going to switch over back again to the desk view. This is, I'm going to now show you that what I actually wanted to do as a live stream today. Look, um, I have grown some garlic here, okay? Yeah, I want to put some bacteria under the microscope, but I was growing some garlic here because I wanted to do a demonstration of uh, observing cells that divide in the root. Okay, dividing root cells. Okay, this was kind of my, my original intention. Um, but uh, what I then discovered is, is, is that the water in here started to look very cloudy and dirty. And I said, oh, cloudy water is a sign that something's growing in here. And sure enough, there are a lot of bacteria in here. So I said, okay, why not uh, look at those bacteria? Okay. And uh, so for this reason, I'm going to just use uh, this one over here. These are unknown bacteria. So I have to uh, make sure that uh, we stick to certain hygienics because I don't, uh, yeah, I don't have any wounds or anywhere, but I'm just going to use this because it happens to be here. But yeah, at the same time, we got to be a little bit clean here. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, use a, a new tip. So I've got a box here with new tips. And yeah, in case you, you didn't see that, I've got a whole box yeah, of, of, of tips that I can, and then they're disposable. And uh, I'm going to take a very small sample. When you observe bacteria, when you observe bacteria, always use a there's already almost too much a very small sample the reason being that the reason being that um they are so small and thin and they go vertically and then they're immediately going out of focus again let me take my reading glasses off for now okay they're going out of focus uh, very quickly and um, this is not uh, easy to to do then so um i'm going to Put again a cover glass on here okay and uh, it goes under the microscope and I'm going to now show you live bacteria um, yeah first in bright field and then in phase contrast okay so let's uh, remove this again here the cheek cells I always start off uh, with a low magnification actually they are gonna be too difficult to see now obviously yeah let's go up a little bit with the magnification i need to find the focus first okay so this is now 40 times no uh, these are not bacteria uh, it's difficult to find it looks almost like no this is not uh, Oh, it could be. I don't know if I got the right focus, but you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over now to the phase contrast objective. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's see if this actually, yeah, actually we are, we are. Yep. I think that's it. Okay. So, yeah. So all of those dots that you see there, okay um are individual bacteria and in bright and you see that the, again you have this uh, tiny halo effect okay and in bright field this is how it looks in bright field okay you it's much you're able to see them much less huh? and again in phase contrast okay yeah. so you're able to see them much better honestly i have to tell you that today in the afternoon i have seen a little bit more interesting ones there were also some of them that were kind of moving around. Let me see what this is here. Ah, that's the thing. Look, folks, I was <laughs> I was actually focusing on the top of the on the top of the cover glass. Are you able to see the moving dots now? These are now the that's the one that I wanted to show you. Okay. Yeah. If you uh, look carefully, you're able to see those tiny moving dots. Okay, these are bacteria. And uh, in bright field, what are you able to see? Almost nothing, okay? Um, you might be able to get a better contrast by closing the condenser. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, 
but still this is now with the condenser closed uh, but still um, yeah not a lot uh, to see but uh, here in phase contrast yeah yeah we're able to see them okay so um, so phase contrast is very good for for small uh, transparent objects okay um, Yep. Uh, hello. When you look at the subject with a 50 times objective and use an eyepiece with its 10 times the magnification, you get is 500. That's correct. Uh, wondering how you take these images with a camera. Am I right that the camera mounted to the microscope camera mount doesn't have the eyepiece magnification? That is correct. Um, the camera magnification and eyepiece magnification are totally two totally different magnifications. Uh, both are you, yeah. One is called linear magnification, and the other one is. Uh, um, simply called magnification and the word magnification is used for both but actually the meaning is quite different okay um, so without additional eye uh, piece magnification of 10 okay so we talk about uh, the different uh, yeah uh, I didn't purchase any microscope yet so it's a very hypothetical question to me but I plan to get one with a camera mount so I can photograph bacteria. So what I've got is, is the following. You, you can, um, in my case, I've got a DSLR camera connected um, and uh, the DSLR camera is connected over USB to my computer and that's how I'm, how I'm doing the live stream. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Okay, welcome to the live stream. Are the bacteria moving now? Yeah, you can actually see them that they're moving. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is the following. So um, I'm going to, uh, we looked at now phase contrast, bright field, and I'm going to now show you how the whole thing looks in DIC, in differential interference contrast. Okay, and uh, for that purpose, I'm going to switch over to this here. Yeah, um, and uh, it's, this is DIC, but let's move up yet one further, 60 times. Okay. Um, and if you look carefully now, you're going to see that, um, I don't know if YouTube is able to capture this properly, um, but the bacteria now seem to have, be brighter on one side compared to the other side. Okay. Um, so there um, is, um, yeah, it's, uh, and I'm also able to change the background color to increase contrast. Okay. Let me quickly adjust the light here because I see that, okay. Okay, because of, uh, there have been some uh, some artifacts on my face because there, it was a little bit overexposed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is basically this. I would like to now show you um, some water samples um, as well um, under the um, microscope. Uh, something that I found. Is this still here? Uh -huh. Something that I found uh, today, uh, pretty much by accident, and I'm gonna make a separate video of this. Let me show you what I have here, and then I'm going to explain to you. I have to find it now first. Um, where is it? Uh, I have to find it first. I, I, don't, I hope that uh, it's already dried up a little bit. Ah, here it is. Uh, okay, it dried up a little bit. Um, and then we're going to look at this again also on the face contrast. Okay, um, what we have here is an, an, an algae, and here, unfortunately, on the side, this is um, already air, um, air bubble. Yeah, and here it's in water, and you see the individual the algae in here. Um, in phase contrast, no, it's not phase contrast. I have to switch over. So that is the I see. I have to remove um, the arrow. I have to remove, and this is now a bright field. So this is now bright field. Okay. Where is it? So that is a uh, ah, yeah. Here we go. That's nice. So um, that's um, an important thing that I would like to demonstrate right now. You see that it looks green. Okay. So these are the individual cells containing chloroplasts of the algae that looks green in regular bright field. Um, and now I'm going to switch over to phase contrast. Okay. Open it a little bit. And this is how it looks in phase contrast. Okay. So um, you see, it kind of loses a little bit its natural appearance this way. Um, it still looks green, but sometimes, depending on the object, uh, the differences in brightness kind of overlap with the color, and therefore it does not quite appear quite as colorful. Okay. So um, now you're gonna wonder, okay, where did I get this? Uh, where did I get this uh, algae from? It's actually quite an interesting uh, case. I'm gonna just quickly explain. Look at look at this. It's it's huge. It's, it's very long, yeah, yeah, and uh, 
It was actually quite a quite a little a bit, a bit of a surprise to me. Oh, I lost it. I lost it. Here's another one. Okay. Um, doesn't matter. I'm going. Ah, here it is again. Let's let's have a look at this. I found this um, um, algae a little bit by accident last year in summer. So I don't know, three several months ago in July. I visited uh, for holidays, uh, yeah, the ocean, and there I collected a water sample, just some ocean water. Okay, just regular ocean water, nothing in it, um, salt water. Okay, it was in northern Germany where I did a visit. It's called the Wattenmeer, the Wadden Lake, Wadden, Wadden Sea, rather. Uh, huge tides, beautiful natural area there. And then you're not able to see this here, but all of a sudden I, I could see that on the, on the inside, on the inside, yeah, well, maybe you're able to see it here. Um, all of a sudden some algae were growing. Okay. Um, and uh, on one side more than on the other side, I suppose the one that was kind of uh, turned towards light. And uh, um, that's why I got one of them and put it under the microscope. Yeah? So quite uh, quite uh, interesting to see. Um, and uh, I think that uh, they look kind of nice because uh, they are very thin. Okay. Um, however, if you look at thicker objects under the microscope in phase contrast, it might not look as good. Okay, and we're going to try that now as well. So I would like to show you a couple of uh, um, um, specimens that are probably not quite as suitable. Okay, bacteria we've seen they just appear darker um, on a bright background, but let's try uh, some others. Okay, uh, here I've got um, yeah so a, a water sample. Here, here we go. Uh, there's some some yeah, leaves in there, some pond water. And I'm just going to take a little bit out here. There were a whole bunch of rotifers in here some time ago. I don't know if I've got enough now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. So you know what? I'm just going to leave this here. Um, this Oh, you cannot see it. I'm just going to leave this little leaf here um, to make sure everything's a little bit thicker. And I'm going to put on, on here a slightly larger cover glass. Got those large cover glasses here because uh, you're going to see this kind of the oh I broke it. It's kind of the idea is is to show you that the phase contrast actually works best for very thin specimens and thicker ones sometimes uh, yeah don't quite look uh, look as good. Okay, um, okay, and DSC looks a lot like normal bright field using a slightly off center mirror as a light source. Correct. DIC and so-called oblique illumination look very similar. Okay. Um, yeah. So growing unknown type of bacteria was discovered accidentally last year in my kitchen. <laughs> yep. And bacteria came murky with smell. Yes. Okay. So let's put this on here. And uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to see. Um, let's remove this again. And uh, let's put on this one over here. Yeah, it's it's of course if it's too thick, uh, the working distance is of course very small. Yep, and here that is the leaf. Oh yeah, it's a very difficult uh, in orientation. Let me go down with the magnification first. Up, it's bumped into it. Um, yeah, and uh, simply to focus everything a little bit and to see if there are any. Uh, other interesting microorganisms here somewhere. This is not very interesting. There were a whole bunch of rotifers actually the other day. Ah, here, here is one. Okay, let's let's have a look at this one here. Here, here are a few rotifers. Okay. Um, and uh, let's do the following now. Let's have a look at those. Um, yeah, they're they're feeding, of course, uh, on the on the leaf. So let's uh, go up here, and this here is now regular bright field. Here is the rotifer. Okay, go up a little bit, and uh, switching over now to. Phase contrast. 
Where is it now? I lost it. Well, ah, here it is. Focus again. Yeah. And uh, I think it doesn't look so good. Okay, that is indeed something very common that um, essentially um, when you're looking at slightly thicker specimens like rotifers are actually multicellular animals, okay, then you do not get uh, the very nice effect um, as you get sometimes with other specimens. Yeah. So I personally find uh, phase contrast microscopy, yeah, depends really very much on the, on, on the sample. Let's have another one. Look at them. Yeah. There's nothing here. And uh, another reason is, is that I've got a four, uh, 40 times objective. And this basically means that uh, the magnification is already quite large. Okay. And I'm going to now switch back over to Brightfield again. Okay. And, uh, you know, why not? go down a little bit with the magnification and that's DIC. Yeah, the, the rotifer is hiding behind the, <laughs> behind the leaf here. There's another one over here. Yeah, not, I'm not so satisfied with this uh, sample here. Maybe I'm going to try a different water sample. And I don't know, a couple of days ago, there were lots of, uh, yeah, a lot of rotifers in the sample. But maybe I'm going to try a different one, just a second. And here I've got another jar. Maybe we're a little bit more lucky with this one over here. Okay. Put it back and uh, cover glass and let's give it another try. I need to of course change over to the microscope view. So this here is now again DIC. Mm. Mm -hmm. Again, not a very good one. I'm not happy. <laughs> can it, can this be possible? That's a dead sample. Well, I mean, plenty of bacteria, of course, but not something that I was actually hoping to find. Whole bunch of debris. Nah. Not not so cool. Okay. In this case, you know what? This one is gonna work. <laughs> uh, these are nematode worms. This is okay. Let's let's uh, give it a try here. <laughs> because I think. Uh, there is a, no, a natural progression of uh, microorganisms in a water jar. And then sometimes what happens is if it's uh, too old, then, yeah. So I hope that I caught some of the nematode worms here. Up. Oh. Again, cover glass goes on top. Um, because there is uh, now vinegar in, uh, yeah, in, in, oh, you didn't see that, what I've done. Okay. Um, I <laughs> forgot. There is, uh, I took, uh, there are some nematode worms in here. These are called vinegar eels. And because there is vinegar in here, I really want to make sure that there is not, uh, um, nothing spills out here because uh, acid and microscope optics uh, don't really like each other. Okay, so I'm going to simply take away and then let's hope for the best that I was able to catch a few nematodes. 
And let's look at those on the phase contrast. If I caught some. Yeah, here it is. Here's one already. Okay. Maybe I'm able to find one which is not moving too much. But here's some. So. Yep, here, here's one. Okay, good. Because they're moving so quickly that um, it can be difficult to, to trace sometimes. And this one I really squeezed now between cover glass and microscope slide. So let's have a look here um, in phase contrast and in bright field. Here we go. That's, that's much better. Okay. So this is now basically in bright field and uh, phase contrast looks like this. Okay. And uh, therefore we're able to see certain structures in, in greater detail that otherwise we could not see. Again, bright field. Okay. Phase contrast. And because it's so fun, how does it look in DIC? This is how it looks in DIC. So you're able to see the different uh, contrasting uh, techniques now. So uh, I'm going to, lots of comments again, which I'm going to go through. Okay. Okay, I'm quickly reading through the comments here. Yes, water samples are my favorite. Okay. Uh, growing unknown type bacteria accidentally. Uh, there's a worm that's a rotifer. Okay, that was from before. Do you have any tips for making oblique illumination filters for 10x and 40x? Managed to get for 4 and 6, but not for the previous ones. Um, okay, if you want to try oblique illumination, what you do is the following. Take yourself a dark field patch stop, like uh, the one I've made over here. And uh, where is it? Yeah, so that's basically what I made. I simply put some, some black uh, tape here. And then if you have a swing out co uh, filter holder, one that can uh, be rotated out, then use this and sim simply swing it out partially until you get an oblique effect. Okay, that's the easiest way. Yeah? You can also experiment. You know, if you don't want to have the background completely black, you can also make it blue. So it looks a little bit... Yeah, with a bluish background, use those and then swing out the filter holder partially and then you get oblique illumination. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, lots of uh, dialogue going on between the people here. That's fine. Okay. What's your favorite water organism? Oh, I love all of them. <laughs> Is it easier to do DIC on my regular bright? No, you cannot do DIC on a regular bright field microscope. Um, it's, uh, it requires specialized optics. Um, and uh, you need, uh, you know, and you can also not upgrade. Okay, that's the thing. So if you are interested in DIC, um, you need uh, to get yourself a separate microscope. Okay. Vorführ effect. Yes, <laughs> that's the demonstration effect. <laughs> when things work out before and uh, then when you want to sh uh, show it, um, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not a fan of worms, uh, a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, water bears are fine. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, that's uh, okay. It's empty. Does it work for all illuminations? So can you play with the diaphragm and bright field, or are you a nematode? Okay, so I'm I'm gonna do that. Um, basically, I'm going to use bright field. Okay, so let's. Uh, okay, that is now the nematode worm, and in regular bright field, and I'm going to now close the condenser. And uh, the camera, however, will readjust uh, the exposure time. So that's, uh, yeah, also something. Yeah. So it is actually become significantly darker when you look through the microscope. But uh, on the camera, it does not become so much darker because uh, the exposure time changes. Yeah. I make it brighter. Okay. And uh, sometimes it's going to go down a little bit with the light intensity. And you can see that the contrast is lower as well. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you want to go back again to yeah to phase contrast, so that's bright field. I need to change this, okay? And this is again phase contrast. 
Okay. So this this worm does seem to be a little bit dead, but it actually makes it easier to 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 look at it. Yeah. So okay. Um, this was basically this. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to show you? Um, yeah, I do have a couple of other water samples. I'm a little bit irritated that my water samples here are not really working. I have to tell you. Um, but um, let me see. Okay, I've got a huge jar here. Look. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tr try to take a sample from here. Um, I would like to take some filamentous algae. And uh, let's have a look at those. Okay, so I'm going to now do the following. Um, yeah, it's difficult for you to see here. I'm going to go in with my tweezers all the way and to grab. Okay, here we go. Okay, and let's uh, try to take a sample from here. Let's put the jar away. And uh, here again, we're going to compare a little bit uh, the different uh, techniques. I need scissors. Okay, so I've got my dissecting scissors here and we take a small sample. It goes here. Way too much, of course. And what you have to do all the time is, is you have to take it apart. And we only take a very small amount. Um, I'm going to add a drop of water. Okay, cover glass goes on top. So I'm wiping it, cover glass goes on top. Here we go. And uh, let's uh, give it a try again. So the microscope. So right away, I'm here. This is not bright field again. And here we have the algae. Let's focus. Here we go. Okay. So this is a regular bright field. Yeah. I'm going to go down with the magnification now to go to a place where there are more, where the density is a little bit higher. Here, the density is higher here. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so that is a, yeah, that's a regular bright field. I'm closing the condenser now. Okay, to increase the, yeah, there's some other things also floating around. Okay. What's this here? I don't know. Yeah. You get the idea? Ah. See some. Okay, plenty of uh, living things here so this this is now a bright field and now i'm going to switch over again to phase contrast and i need to open the condenser and this is how it looks like in phase contrast yeah and uh, yeah this is an example of how now uh, the green color of the algae is kind of uh, overlapped with the brightness changes of, of phase contrast microscopy So, uh, yeah, and again, right field, uh, I moved it. Let's try it again. This is how the cells look like in, in bright field and in phase contrast. Yeah. So you see that, uh, um, yeah. When I first saw, I got to be honest with you, when I first got my face contrast microscope and put water samples uh, on it, I was actually a little bit disappointed because of the um, effect of face contrast microscopy is only there if the specimens are really very thin. Okay. If they are too thick, uh, then yeah, it kind of looks a little bit blurry because uh, of the thick specimens, uh, the light rays, uh, the wave waves are... Um, are not cleanly shifted, but uh, essentially it kind of, uh, um, yeah. So again, let me focus here a little bit. Okay, so I'll go back to the questions again. More water samples, okay. Any tips on finding amoeba? Um, 
Yeah, what you do is with amoeba is is uh, is uh, you look in water samples and uh, go time lapse. Uh, sometimes there are plenty of amoeba present, but uh, they're difficult to see because they move so slowly. That's why you overlook them. And that is a little bit the problem that I had uh, with uh, amoeba. So there are uh, plenty of, uh, uh, of amoeba usually present, but sometimes difficult to see because you kind of easily overlook them. So this is, the, let's go 20 times uh, bright field again. And I think that is one of the things that I also want to say is, is that, uh, um, yeah, my phase, 40 times phase contrast objective magnifies sometimes a little bit too much. And in many cases, uh, you simply want to observe the specimens at lower magnification. Yeah? I only have here one phase contrast objective and that's my 40 times. And this here is of course, yeah, this again is DIC. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm playing around uh, usually and I always usually pick uh, the system or the, the, the contrasting technique that works best uh, um, for this uh, specific specimen. Okay. Uh, just want to clarify what you said about DSC. I just bought a Motic trinocular with a plan, acro objectives and the uh, Moticam A5. If you want to do DSC, can I use that microscope with attachment like a special objective and lens or do I need a whole new other microscope? Cheers. Honestly, um, DIC is highly specialized. Okay. Um, and you need uh, to actually, um, there are prisms involved, there is polarization involved. Um, so essentially, if you want to get yourself a DIC microscope, then um, I would not upgrade. I would simply get one. Okay, um, a new one. I think it's, uh, I know of some people who have actually put together their own DIC microscope from spare parts, um, used ones uh, from, yeah, that's also possible, but uh, this is uh, quite uh, yeah, a thing to find all of the parts and, and so on. Yeah? It's a question of if you actually want to go that way, yeah? um, because finding all of the secondhand parts can be uh, quite, uh, quite elaborate. Capture image, okay, I have uh, Scharlach at this time, Scharlach, Scharlach. Can you watch, Pen I, I gotta be honest with you, is Scharlach, is this, um, I don't know what the English translation is, I'm, I'm not quite sure, is this a bacterial infection or a virus infection, okay? Uh, so it's very off topic, could you show us the glue you used for permanent slides with water organisms? I want to prepare some stuff over the next few weeks. Yes, but I have, okay. For making permanent mount, it's called Elmer's clear glue. You gotta wait 10 seconds, okay? I gotta run over to my cupboard and get the glue, just a second. So that is the glue that I'm using. Okay, so if you want to make permanent mounts, I, said, I recommend this one. Uh, they have also white glue, but uh, use the clear glue. It's a water-based glue and uh, I've been, it's PVA based and I've been quite successful with that, considering the fact that uh, it's also quite cheap and it's water-based. Yeah? And uh, yeah, streptococcus, ah. Okay, the thing is the following. If you actually want to see bacteria being killed by penicillin, you ha actually have to uh, actually grow them. <laughs> you have to grow them on the Petri dish. Okay, it's, uh, it will be interesting to see how the microorganisms react when an electric current was applied to different kinds of microorganisms. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm, I'm working on this um, to, uh, uh, to have a slide with uh, two electrodes uh, to get some current through it. Um, some microorganisms do react and uh, what I've done also, especially those uh, um, uh, certain animals, micro animals that have a very simple nervous system like flatworms. Well, of course, the nervous system can be stimulated uh, by electricity. So if you uh, apply a small voltage, then you can actually see how those animals, they start to uh, twitch a little bit, of course, uh, because the electrical impulse from the battery um, triggers, uh, yeah, maybe nerve responses or causes their muscles to contract. So it is possible to do that, yeah. Scarlet fever, a uh, scarlet fever, yes, that's Schalach, yep, okay. Um, wood after microorganism dies, it decays. Um, Pretty much, um, yes, if uh, pretty much anything um, that uh, when it is moist uh, and when a microorganism or any organic material uh, yeah, will be then broken down by other microorganisms. So when something dies, then other microorganisms like bacteria will actually eat up 
um, and decompose uh, everything. Okay. Okay, people. Um, yeah. So this is uh, basically uh, was a, a short demonstration um, today of uh, yeah of, of phase contrast uh, microscopy. For those of you who joined uh, um, in a little bit later, uh, a short summary, phase contrast uh, microscopy is a, um, a technique that allows you to increase the contrast, especially of transparent objects, um, for example, bacteria. So um, yeah, if you want to see bacteria uh, darker on a bright background, uh, then uh, phase contrast is, is quite suitable. Um, however, it is not always the best technique. So for example, as we have seen here in um, with uh, yeah, algae and some other water organisms, I feel that sometimes the natural colors of bright field appear sometimes better, like 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 this right now. Um, so my suggestion is 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 to yeah kind of not see this uh, as a general solution, but you always adapt the technique to the specimen that you want to observe. So you cannot say that phase contrast is always better or worse uh, than bright field or dark field or DIC or whatever, but it really depends on what you actually want to achieve. Yeah. And in some cases, phase contrast actually produces significantly worse results. Um, and uh, in some cases, um, yeah, like for example, if you want to observe bacteria, I think it's 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 really uh, beneficial. Okay. Um, so this is uh, yeah. Try training the flat room with electricity, like for example, doing some conditioning experiments. <laughs> that would be something. Is that this actually has been, I think, done already before? Yeah, they tried to condition some flatworms by giving uh, light uh, impulses and then uh, combining it with electrical impulses. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, something that I might have to work. Uh, yeah, I I'd have to prepare a little bit and experiment a little bit with that. Okay, people. Um, it's one hour 20 already. Um, I think um, I'm going to call it quits for today. I do need your help. However, uh, I'm running slowly running out of um, interesting topics to talk about. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions, uh, some of the suggestions I've already read in the chat. Um, but uh, if you have any more suggestions, I would be quite, uh, quite happy because uh, sooner or later i'm through with all of the topics that i can think of <laughs> and if you're any if there's anything specific that you would like to see then of course uh please uh, mention that and i can try to prepare something um sometimes i want to do something and it didn't quite work out i will tell you a little bit what i wanted to do today actually until i realized it didn't work um yeah so i'm going to give you a short look behind the scenes now um there's a reason why i have grown those garlics here, because I wanted to show you the cell division, cell divisions of the onion roots. This was actually my original intention. And in order to stain them, you need a, a stain called uh, carmino acetate. And as a matter of fact, look, I said, there's no problem. I've got a plenty of carmino acetate in my cupboard. And this is what I found. I was already horrified. Look at this. There's something, a problem. It completely corroded and dried up. Okay, um, because the acetate um, is highly corrosive and it worked its way all the way through the lid and everything evaporated. Uh, so I didn't have any more stain left <laughs> um, to actually do the, uh, the staining. Um, so this is a little bit of short look behind the scenes of what I've planned and then, yeah. Uh, so what do we learn from this? Uh, don't use a metal lid um, on, <laughs> on aggressive uh, substances because it's gonna, yeah. It's going to uh, corrode all the way through it. Yeah, so this is a little bit the, um, the my was my original plan. So I'm gonna make some more camino acetate, and then uh, hopefully we're able to see some chromosomes in the future, uh, because uh, this is, uh, was actually the idea of uh, making chromosomes in the cell division stages visible. And uh, there is an easy way how to prepare the onion root tips, because uh, what they do is is there are lots of dividing cells there, right? And this was actually the the, my plan for this live stream until I discovered yesterday that <laughs> that I have to quickly change the topics around because um, of this little accident that happened. Yeah, the fumes kind of worked their way completely all the way through the lid. Look at this. This is horrible. Yeah, it's falling apart. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to quickly read through the last remaining comments. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, Water bears, uh, okay. Tips for prepare microscope slides and not how to do it, okay. 
water bears okay okay i'll get some water bears there's so many types maybe we could uh, see a few variations thank you for the nice stream have a good night stereo microscopy i can do that again yes some stereo microscopy water bears will drop a line to the comments if you find an interesting topic okay red easter egg color should work too as a matter of fact uh, this is something that i also that's a good point um easter is coming up uh, sometimes they're selling easter egg colors in, not in liquid form but in powdered form and i'm kind of hoping that i'm able to get some of those um, again because if it contains carmine then it actually might work red easter egg color I have a two to three decade old package of methylene blue uh, and fuchsia both are still liquid uh, will it still work or do they degrade over time what i heard is is that methylene blue will start to turn purple from blue to purple over time however apparently this does not have a large impact on the um yeah on the quality i just um saying what i read yeah um, i would simply try it out okay i sent you a message on my email can you answer it yep i can try i gotta check my email okay I love water bears. People want to see water bears. Okay. Extracting DNA from fruits or plants. I can do that. Okay. Looking forward. I quickly skim through the staining techniques. She would be nice too. I will tell you the problem with staining. I, I wanted to order some stains. Uh, I'm going to try to do it in any case. But uh, the problem is, is sending liquids uh, over email. Uh, not over email. <laughs> over post okay um some companies uh, especially amazon doesn't do that anymore and i have to see if this is uh, somehow possible but sending liquid uh, prepared stains apparently is a problem okay uh, greetings to everyone uh, in a possible future live stream use of different staining techniques okay um so i will try to um, get some stains um, i tried to do that uh, but it was a little bit difficult um, but um, i'm going to contact my local school supply because uh, sometimes uh, educational supply companies uh, that supply stains to universities and schools, um, yeah, they have uh, less of a problem. And that's what I'm going to try. Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to... Uh, did you write any book for beginners about microscopes? Can I purchase this somewhere? I will be honest with you. I started to write a book and I already had over 200 pages together. And I started editing it and then editing it and there was so much time spent editing that i didn't get anywhere <laughs> so but i will pick up that uh that recommendation of actually putting together uh, maybe a somewhat shorter book but i have to tell you i got carried away a little bit um with the book and then i got stuck in the editing process um, but what i'm going to do and this is indeed an intention is, is to uh, produce a um, significantly thinner version with all of the essential microscopy knowledge as, as a starter this is still something that i want to do um, maybe um, over the coming uh, summer holidays okay um thank you for the stream bye everyone okay um yeah I would like to thank all of you for having joined again. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, not all of the water samples worked out as I intended, but that's a little bit the demonstration effect. Um, but I'm going to, yeah, hopefully see you again next week. Um, I wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. And uh, yeah, the video will be available online again. Bye-bye and uh, see you again next week.